Hey everybody, Lonnie here. So today I want to go ahead and talk about design. We've been doing a lot of coding in my previous videos, so this time we're gonna uh, move into a different area that's equally as important, is a good design. Uh, one of my favorite tools to use is Adobe Experience Design, also known as XD. It's a fairly new um, software application. It's been out for a few years now, and um, it's getting more and more capabilities. It, the, one of the things I like about it is it's kind of intuitive. It's easy to use. There's not a lot of extra features, something like Illustrator or Photoshop that you kind of get overwhelmed when you get in there and you start trying to um, do just some mock-ups. So I typically try to do a mock-up um, of my um, dashboard before I actually start um, doing the um, application work and I try to get that in front of my customer or my client and have them look at it and usually that will uh, you know prompt a lot of discussions and get people to think through things a little bit more before we just jump in and do it so anyway we're gonna go ahead I'm I'm going to take a uh, uh, some artwork that was used in a movie in Star Trek actually and I'm going to try to replicate the uh, part of a dashboard from the movie um, using Adobe XD and the reason I'm doing this is um, a couple of reasons one is you know uh, if you're not a designer like I'm not a designer I don't claim to be but uh, but I have to do design and um, and it's just something that I encounter every time I'm doing dashboard work so I've embraced it and I've tried to learn how to do design work but by looking at somebody else's design um, and like like this dashboard that we're going to work on, for example, is a great way to start learning how to um, how a designer thinks, even though you're not actually having to come up with the design from scratch. So it's just a, a nice uh, middle step that you can take and get some confidence that you know I, I see why they do these little there's little tiny things that you might not pick up just by looking at it. When you actually get in and try to reproduce it as closely as possible, then you learn a lot. Um, I found that is very useful. Also, this is a great way to learn a new um, a new tool if you're not um, super familiar with it you have to kind of learn how to do all these little things and instead of uh, just trying to uh, you know uh, use brute force and figure it out so anyway we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna uh, grab grab this artwork from Star Trek and we're gonna try to design part of a dashboard using that and um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time explaining Adobe XD there's a lot of nice uh, great videos out on YouTube that uh, that uh, show you how to do all these different things so we'll just I'll just kind of like talk you through what I'm um, seeing in the design and what I'm trying to do and and some of the steps that I'm taking and then at the end we'll have um, hopefully something look pretty cool all right so uh, let's go ahead and get started Okay, the first thing I want to do is start a new project. We'll use the, uh, the web um, 1920 by 1080 layout as an artboard. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Double click on this. Uh, we'll rename this as our uh, that, dashboard. We can go to layers and I can double click on this and I can expand it out. Now what I want to do is not go through all the features of XD, of Adobe XD, but just really kind of build this uh, dashboard out and I'll highlight things as I work through them, pointing out some of the different features and why I like uh, this product. But overall the, the goal is, is we want to develop um, a dashboard from some artwork just for practice and to get us to start thinking like a designer. Okay, I'm going to bring in um, the artwork. This I found on the internet, and it's uh, it was used in the movie during one of the scenes where it's overlaid on a on a portal, looking out into space, and it's all animated. It looks super super awesome. Uh, what I want to do is I don't want to do that do this whole um, this whole thing we don't have nearly that much time this took me forever to do and uh, but I want to go ahead and do this shield strength area well, this will do this uh, this caption here we'll do this high level KPI this shows the overall strength and then we'll do these linear gauges so the first thing I want to do is I want to mask out um, all the artwork that we're not, I'm not interested in I'm just gonna draw a shape here a square 
and we'll pick the area that we're interested in. I'll hit Control A to select everything, and then we're going to mask these uh, images together. So I'll right click, do a mask with shape, and now we're just looking at uh, we're just looking at this section here. Uh, use my V to get my selector tool to come out, and uh, we'll we'll do that. So we're going to try to reproduce that right next to um, right next to this artwork. We're going to reproduce it right here. Um, I also want to change uh, the uh, my artboard. I want to change the background to uh, to black. So I'm going to go ahead and click on fill Hit zero here. That'll give me black, and that will get us where we need to be. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our uh, get some fonts going here and just do some simple text and change the color of our text. So I'll use my text selector here, and then I'll type in a I'll do caps locks. Type in shield strength. And uh, over here on the text, I know the font is called Changeling Neo. That is, uh, I looked that up. Um, I actually found somebody that had talked about the fonts used in different movies, and I and I located this. This is not a free font. This is something that I use in my Adobe Cloud, uh, Creative Cloud subscription, and so I'm able to use that on this project. But if I were to try to deploy this anywhere, I would need to uh, pay for this font. Okay, we're going to go ahead and um, I think we'll make this bold. We're going to zoom in. Move this right on top so we can just get the font size the way that we need it. I think it's going to be right around there. That looks pretty good. You can see the S here. We're lined up. And I can see our character spacing is a little off, so let's go ahead and see if we can get that uh, set up a, something that would work. 30. Maybe 32. That looks pretty close. And we'll finally just um, pick our color here. I'll use this color picker, come in, and uh, we want to probably just pick this right area right here. And if we zoom out, you can see. That looks pretty close. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do this for the rest of the text. We'll just fast, for, we'll just speed through this um, in a fast forward mode. Um, I'm just going to keep doing the same thing uh, for each one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set up a linear gradient here. In the linear gradient, we just select the linear gradient. These are breakpoints here. And we have a couple of breakpoints I think we're going to need. We have bright, dark, and then bright. So we'll put in a couple more in here. And we can just select the breakpoint, and we can use our color picker to go pick the area. And so I think what, uh, what I'll do is I'll pick that. That's a brighter area. And then I'll uh, go ahead and pick somewhere around uh, right next to this line like that then we'll go ahead down here and we'll 
um, select this guy, pick the next area, which could be similar in color, and then finally we'll pick the last one. I'll we'll go ahead and get this uh, bright area right in here, and uh, and then we can we can play around with these to try to get them to match a little bit. I like that. Finally, we'll uh, put these lines in here to finish up the graph, graph, the graphic. Let's get the line. We'll select the line and get the proper color. I'm gonna have time controlling my mouse here. Okay. I'm going to control copy, paste, put in a new line like that. Let's go ahead and center. I'm going to center these lines here. Oops. Don't want damage report. Go ahead and center these lines. Okay, get everything centered. All right, I'm going to go ahead and um, speed this up and do all the text, and then we'll move down to the linear gauge part. Okay, I like that. I'm going to go ahead and group this all together. Just selecting these items. Hit Control G to group them. So now I can work with that. I'll go ahead and uh, group this. Let me just select the right ones here. Uh, group those together too. So that'll make it just easier to move around with. Something else I want to do here is I want to lock this because um, when I'm overlaying things on top of it, if I end up clicking behind it, which has happened a few times here, it just causes uh, more problems. So I'm going to go to the layers here. Well, actually, I'm going to do it a different way. I think I'm going to right click this and just lock this. This little lock appears. Can I unlock it that way if I need to move it? Just locking it will make it easier to work on these gauges. Okay, let's go ahead and go down to these gauges. And um, what we'll do first is we'll. Um, I think I'm just going to draw a single line in a block and try to get this coloring and this transparency working correctly and then we can multiply everything out. So we'll zoom in here 
draw a line. Holding the shift key down, I can uh, make sure that it's horizontal. Let's get the proper size here. Holding the shift key will prevent it from going off at a weird angle. Okay, I like that. Let's go ahead and draw a box here, rectangle. Let's get the rep representative of what this might look like. I think I'm going to get rid of the border. Just come up here and maybe make that a little smaller. Okay. Now if we look at if we look at this overall, we can see that we have the some transparency happening between the lines and um, the rectangle here, and I also have a linear gradient going on with the rec rectangle. So let's set up our uh, let's set up our linear gradient first. Same thing, I'm going to put in a break point somewhere in the middle here. It looks like it's brighter it's, than it's darker down here. There's probably going to be one break point at least. Uh, we'll pick the top area, the brightest color that we can get. Pick a middle area here. Maybe something like that. And then I'll finally pick a um, dark area down here. Something dark. And then I can uh, adjust these if I if I if I want to uh, you know just have it get really bright at the top. I don't know how much the difference there is between this. Let me pick this color again. Okay, I like that. Now I'm going to bring this up, and overlay this on the, overlay this just to see if I can get the effect that I want. Um, let's go ahead and fill this, take a color picker for the line. Something bright here, like that, and then um, I'm going to change the uh, opacity of this to see if I can get it to bleed through. And if I do that, it's not working. Let's go over here, I'll move it off to the side. that. Let me uh, I think I want to change uh, the color of this line to make it a little brighter. And then we can change the opacity, bring it down like that. Let me try moving this forward to see if we uh, I'm going to move this forward here and just see if we can bring it to the front. See if that uh, improves the situation at all. I bring this, make this bright again, and then if I bring this down, um. Now let's send this back again. So 
is this. That's probably going to be close enough. We don't need to um, make it exact, exact. We have that. Let's move that off. I'm going to draw this shape here. We'll do, uh, I'm going to do three rectangles here. No border, just the fill. I'm going to make this, uh, we have these bright areas here, so we'll work on those. And um, we'll draw another rectangle here. No border. We're going to bring this. Make sure we get the right size here. We're going to bring this in. A little bit. I'm not going to worry about that anti aliasing there. Okay, I like that. Looks good. Now let's go ahead and pick our colors. This guy, pick our color, like that, and we'll put this here, and copy him, come over here, and expand that out, and that's rough, rough. Um, representation. I'm going to go ahead and make this all a single shape. Oops. Going to do just group it. All right. Go ahead and align this. All right, now the next thing we need to do is to draw a bunch of lines. So there's a feature here called uh, Repeat Grid. Repeat grid, I can select on the object that I want to repeat, press this button, and then when I start drawing it out, it'll create uh, multiple objects. And I can change the spacing in between those just by moving this up here, like that. And I can keep uh, just drawing this out. So that's super useful in situations like this, where you'll end up a lot uh, repeating a lot of elements and doing that type of thing. Um, Actually, we have a little bit of a rotation issue going on here. So let's let's go ahead and bring that. There we go. Okay. Bring that up a tiny bit. We'll copy this. Bring it down here, and we want to. Rotate this, hold the shift key, get click into space, click into the right place. Um, that looks pretty close. We'll get our um, overlay going there, and uh, maybe. Lighten this up a little bit more just so it looks a bit more interesting. And 
I want to send this to the back. Make sure that bring this to the front. I want to make sure that this is overlaying correctly here. Okay, that looks that looks a little bit better. Put this here. I'm going to copy it three times. And we'll move it here and here. We'll group this together. Move it off to the side. See how it looks. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and draw out all these boxes with these text um, uh, lettering in here. And then, um, and then we're going to multiply out all of this and just keep doing, uh, just basically repeating what we've been, what we're seeing here. So sit back, relax, and uh, we'll get this knocked out.
Okay, so there we have it. We, uh, uh, I went ahead and just uh, tried to replicate some artwork from Star Trek for, for a dashboard. But you can think about as you're going through the design process, you kind of have to like look at all these little, these little tiny details that put together, um, that make the design overall pleasing and attractive. And you can see what the artist had to do here with their artwork and all the little decisions about fonts and spacing and coloring and all those types of things. So when you're doing, so you get a kind of a, a little bit of insight, onto, insight into what they were thinking when they're going through this process. Um, you really kind of learn a lot about uh, uh, design just by practicing like this. You also learn how to use the tools. Um, XD, Adobe XD, I think is a great, a great uh, tool for doing uh, mockups. It has a ton of more features that I didn't show here that you could check out. But, um, but if, even if you don't use that tool, you know, still, you know, try to do mockups before you actually jump in and you start um, design or you start putting something together and you start coding and laying stuff out on a dashboard. It's a really great place to start. I even actually usually start one step uh, before I open up Adobe XD and I do sketches and things like that just to really kind of like start getting a general idea of the direction I want to go before I start putting together um, all of this, uh, putting all this effort in here. There's uh, more steps that we can take after this. I'm going to be doing more videos on designing and then how you move from design into actual implementation and then how do you make things like this come to life, which is the super exciting part for me. So um, I hope this was uh, helpful. I hope it'll motivate you to, to, do, to, to do some design stuff if you haven't been doing that. And uh, don't be afraid of it. It's a learned skill and it just takes practice and studying just like anything else. And that's, uh, that's it for now. So till next time, my name is Lonnie. Thanks again for watching. And if you liked this video, please do a thumbs up. And if you think you might be interested in this stuff, please subscribe to my channel. And I will um, catch you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.